2016 Chevy Colorado. Removing front brake pads. And this has the Brembo style. You got to remove these two uh, hairpins. They come out of this pin that runs across and goes through the caliper, through the pads, and then through the other side of the caliper. And it goes in right on the other end right here. Like that. Okay, you pull them out. I can't get access to this one because I need to turn this one. It might have to be frozen in there. And you take your punch and punch out that pin. And then you can pull it out. Okay. Get that one out and do the same thing to the lower one. You'll have to get some vice grips on there so needle nose ones and turn it so you can get this hair pin out of there, hair clip out of there. Okay. Remove my hair pin. Okay. As you're punching this pin out with your punch, you need to push in on this clip, the spring, to allow your punch to go past it okay now you can pull your the pin out pull your punch out and hold on to your spring it's gonna pop on you all right then you want to get yourself two screwdrivers and you want to pry the pad away from the rotor so basically you're pushing the pistons back into the caliper and as you do that You get a gap in there. When you get a gap in there, then you can pound your screwdriver into one side a little bit. That'll keep this pad pushed into the piston. So when you're pushing the other set of pistons in, you're not pushing them back out. So when you got all four pushed in pistons, then you can remove your pads. And then you can wire brush the riding surface that the pads ride on inside of your caliper. Okay. Okay, now that you got your all four pistons pushed in, you can remove your screwdrivers and pull your pads out. But if you're gonna replace the rotor, you'll need to remove the retainer bolt, which is right here, it's a Torx bit. Probably be a 40 or a 35. Most of the time they break. And also on the inside, you got an 18 there and an 18 there. And you can remove the whole caliper assembly. The caliper is part of the bracket also. But I'm just going to replace the pad, so I'm not going to do that. But if you do, pull that eight, them two 18s out and make sure you retorque them to 135 foot-pounds. And make sure your hub is clean. It's underneath your rotor. Make sure there's no rust buildup in there because that'll give you a brake pulsation. So you don't want to do it. Do that. All right, so now we're going to pull these out and then pads pull right out. And you want to get a wire brush in here and you want to brush this surface and this surface on the caliper assembly and then you want to put a little bit of grease on that surface for your where your pad rides not actual grease but sil glide or the grease that comes with the pads in your kit and this is a good wire brush that i use you can trim the end of the wood off so they can reach in there further also but there's the part number. You can look that up on Amazon and get them. And you want to stick them in there. They fit right in there really nice. And clean them up. And then when you're done, you want to spray some uh, glass cleaner in there. And blow some air in there. And blow some of that dirt and break, old brake dust and rust dust out of there. Okay. Make sure the pads move in and out freely before you put any lube on them. Just make sure everything's cleaned up. All right. Same thing with the pins. Make sure everything goes together. 
leans in there. Okay. All right. Now you can lube up your calipers with the dialect grease sort of um, so glide and put your anti-seize on your pins when they go into calipers. All right. If the uh, pads are too tight inside of here, then it's okay. You can grind them down a little bit right here and right there and then make them uh, on a, a bevel, Put it on, make them rounded a little bit. Just, just grind them down just a little bit, okay? And that's it. If you got one of these little brushes, put it in your dialetic grease or um, Uh, so glide silicone compound basically so came with the kit so I put it on my little brush I go inside here and I stick it in there try not to get it on the rotor and you just want to put it on that base it's in there want to paint it in there get the idea do the, do the bottom and the top all right now if you look inside there the inside is not open but the outside is open so you're gonna have to stick your squeaker gonna be on the outer pad on the bottom towards the rotation and another thing is to make sure that that squeaker is not protruding past the pad this direction okay if it's protruding past you know then it will hit the it will hit the road uh, caliper and bind you up so if it's sticking downward past the pad and smack it with a hammer a little bit to bend that up here. Point what I'm talking about. This piece right here. Make sure it doesn't protrude past that. Okay. So I put a little bit of uh, <clears throat> silk glide on there, dilated grease, whatever, silicone, and then you can put it inside there. And if you look, you see the boots protruding out a little bit because the, they get air behind them and they protrude out. So make sure you don't cut those when you put these in there. Be careful. Push them in there slowly, wiggle it back and forth, and drops in place. Okay? So that one's in there. And then get the other pad without the squeaker on and put some uh, dialetic grease on the uh, <clears throat> slide parts of it. A little bit, and then you can put this one in. Stick it in there. These are a little tight. <clears throat> so, I don't know why AC Delco shouldn't be this tight. Clean them up, there's no big rust on there. Now, there it goes. All right. Now we'll get our pins. We'll clean our pins up. Put some uh, anesthes on your pins and stick them in there. Stick it in there. Turn it. Pull them back out. Put some anesthes on your pin. Stick it in there and turn it. That way you rubs anesthes inside your little holes so the pins don't freeze on there. And then you can stick them in the rest, you know, all the way through with your spring on there. Get some anesthes on my pin. Stick it in there, turn it, okay? Do the same thing to the bottom. And then turn it so the anesthesia gets inside there. Now I'm gonna do it to the outside too. I'm gonna put some, some more anesthesia on there. Okay. 
I had this problem when I took it apart that this upper one was really tight coming apart. So now I'm going together and it's doing the same thing with the new pads. Okay, so now I got my pins in here and I got the outer pad in here. Okay, that's perfect. And this one, perfect. Now when I put the inner pad in, it's tight. Not <clears throat> inner pads in. This pin moves freely. This one does not. If I take this pin out, I still cannot line it up and push it in. So, what I'm going to do is remove some metal on the inner pad on the upper part of that hole. Upper part, okay? I use the carbide bit, it's a quarter inch. I removed the part of that on the upper part on the pad itself. Now, this is where you know, your brake part should always be. Everything moves freely, okay? Not binding. All right, now we need to reverse our pins and put our spring in there. All right, you push your pin through your spring as you're pushing down on it. And the next you wanna do is put your punch through here into your pad. If your pad's not lined up, go in through behind here and push up on your pad. Put your punch through the pad. Now you can push your pin through the pad, pushing your pin out. Do that on both of them. And then keep pushing your pin and it stops at the caliper and then go behind again behind here and push up on the pad and that will help line up your pin and you can fully push it in and when you got it pushed in all the way find your hole in here you might have to turn your pin but you'll find your hole and put your your uh, cotter pin clip in there and then push them up and then you are done and that's how you replace the brake pads. Just, if you had a problem with it coming apart, same thing I had, this pin was stuck in there and it actually looked like it was like cockeyed. But anyway, that's because the pads need to be ground down on the upper part of the hole. And also on the pad, it wouldn't slide in and out of here nicely. So I had to grind down the top part of the pad where it goes into the caliper. I just ground down just a little bit on each of the sections of the pad. Other than that, and that's how you do it. If I helped you with this video, that's great. If you could subscribe to me, that'd even be more better. If you already subscribed to me, I appreciate it. And when you do the other side, make sure you do the other side the same way. And always when you take things apart, pay attention to how they come apart. If they come apart tough, look for it when you're going back together. And when I'm talking about grinding on the pad, I removed a little bit on this surface right here. Just a little bit. Stuck it in a grinder and made it kind of round. If you make it sh sharp and flat, it might allow call it to get uh, stuck inside there because of the smoothness, because of the sharp edge. So I always put them, make them a little bit round. Okay, and that's it. I appreciate it. Thank you. And don't forget, when you put your tires on, make sure you torque them to 140 foot pounds, lower down the ground. And then uh, go inside and pump your brake pedal to make sure you got a firm brake pedal. And make sure that you double check your fluid levels. Put your reservoir cap back on. And double make sure that you got a good brake pedal before you put it in reverse and drive. 
and that's it and you are done